All right, going over the setup for our lateral back drag is key with this drill. We want to make sure that we perform it correctly each and every rep. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up with the bag slightly off to the side. It's going to fall right around belly button height. So if I'm set up here in a half kneeling position, it's going to be right at my knees and then I'll attain a plank position. So important concepts, I'm pushing through ball of feet, gripping the ground with both hands. So it's in a position where when I grab it with this opposite arm, I'm getting some lat involvement, going super slow, about a three count, and back down. Again, getting a little bit of pretension. That is one rep. Important to note, we're not lifting it up and tossing it over. We want that contact with the ground the entire drag. So it's about a three count to really challenge that core stability. Again, we're thinking about gripping the ground with our hands, getting that lat involvement. If the bag is too far up and I go into this, I'm not getting any lat. We want to make sure it's positioned correctly to get that lat engaged. Again, we don't want to lift it and drag it. We want that nice drag. Right, left is one repetition. All right, for our sprinter stance, shoulder squat, the ultimate sandbag is going to be on the shoulder of the back leg when we take that sprinter stance. So reviewing what a sprinter stance is, it's a heel-toe relationship, okay? We want that back heel up the entire time. So when you're squatting, that heel stays up so we don't get any rotation of the pelvis to occur. Well, we can widen our stance a little bit to get a better depth on our squat for those individuals with lacking a little bit more mobility. So. The broad side of the ultimate sandbag is facing up. There's no handles. That way you can shoulder it and you don't have any handles on your body. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm standing about halfway over the ultimate sandbag. I'm gonna go ahead in a nice hinge position, cupping the ultimate sandbag, and then I will go ahead into a shoulder position. Again, we wanna make sure we're setting up each and every time. So I've shouldered the bag onto my right shoulder. That means I'm gonna assume a sprinter stance with that right leg back as well. So making sure I'm getting some tension, I wanna pull that bag into my body as I'm descending into the squat. So we're doing six full reps and then we'll switch sides. Again, that back heel stays up the entire time. Thinking about gripping the ground with that planted foot, really pushing through the ball of foot on that back leg. For our ultimate sandbag clean and press, we will be utilizing the neutral grip handles. And this is where so many people can go wrong. The neutral grip handles are gonna set us up for a nice open pack position of our shoulder versus the snatch grip, which is gonna close it off. So again, make sure you're using the right handles for the clean and press. Also, we are cleaning to fist and then pressing over the crown of the head. We don't want the bag to fall back onto those wrists, which is another area where people can go wrong with this. So. Going into your setup, nice hinge. We're really gonna start by pulling the handles apart. That's gonna get our lat engagement. So many times people don't have tension upon the handles. So make sure you pull those handles apart. Again, we don't want that bag falling forward and for you to reach it. Make sure it's in a good position, back's not falling forward or towards you and applying some tension on the back. So we're gonna go ahead and clean the fists and then press over the crown of head. And here we go, we're gonna release it and let our hips do the movement versus just letting our arms go down. So again, getting some tension on those handles, getting into the fist loaded position, and then pressing over the crown of head. So each and every rep, you need to clean the fist, press over the crown of head, return the weight down. So we want that weight to return back down to the ground with our hips initiating the movement. So many times people just let the weight fall from their arms. That's where we can get some shoulder elbow injuries to occur. So we want that load to return back to the ground properly. All right, just as in the clean and press, we're utilizing the neutral grip handles for our max lunge. So same concepts occur. You still want to pull those handles apart. We really want to get that tension involved with these movements. So I'm going to go ahead and deadlift the weight up. For our max lunge, we want our head facing forward. We want to make sure that we're not looking side to side. We want to stay forward. We're going to come down one, two count, 
drive up, switch sides. One, two count, drive up. We don't want to over rotate, keeping tension on the handles the entire time. Again, I'm thinking about planting both feet and driving up. So where people go wrong is they over rotate or they look away or they gaze away from the front of them. They're not using the wrong handle. They're using the wrong handles. So again, neutral grip handles. We want you to take about a one, two pause when we get to that side, drive up and then switch sides.